Baker Hargrove. And I'm Robert Baker Hargrove, and welcome to the BHC Assessment Consulting Workshop Series. And in today's workshop, we're going to be discussing unconscious bias. So Dr. Dave, when we say unconscious bias, what does that mean? And can you give us a little bit more of an explanation about that? Right. So this workshop is one of many in our leadership development series that we provide for organizations to help executives and senior leadership teams support their organizations in their growth and helping organizations be much better at what they do. And in this particular workshop, we talk about unconscious bias. Um, bias is really about judgments, perceptions, and attitudes, either positive or negative, that people have about the things around them. A lot of times when we're talking about this, we're talking about people. Um, but it really can be about anything mm -hmm. when you're talking about bias in general. But when we have these types of workshops, we're really talking about people. So one of the things that David just mentioned, or I should say three, was perceptions, judgments, and attitudes in regards to um, how people utilize those. Well, what I'm going to say is they impact and they can impact your decision making. They in can impact and influence your hiring. They can impact and influence you know, rates of pay or raises. So why it's so important for you to really have an understanding that there is some unconscious bias, which we all do have, is because it can steer you one way or another without you even realizing it. So being much more open to understanding how it impacts you from, a, it could be from a productivity standpoint, it can be from an interpersonal communication standpoint. Uh, you never know how it can intertwine itself, it really can help you begin to change um, or nuance some of your decision making or some of the things that may be influencing you to really help drive your business forward and you develop your leaders. Right. And so, you know, like an example of bias, and I'll put it in very simple terms, you know, so like a, a conscious bias example would be in the case of our daughter <laughs> who knows very well that I like ketchup, but I don't like tomatoes, even though they're made from the same substance. You know, and there might be like a little more sugar and ketchup than tomatoes. <laughs> a whole lot more sugar <laughs> but, and ketchup. But, you know, she knows very clearly that she doesn't like tomatoes, but she likes ketchup, right? And so that's a, con that's a conscious bias. And so you could apply something very, you know, like that to the workplace where I know that I like this, but I don't like that, right? But an unconscious bias would be something with regards to that you're completely unaware that you have a particular judgment, attitude, right. or perception about something. And this is where it really gets important because it can be insidious and dangerous on the impact that it has to workplace culture or how an organization functions. So, so and that brings to mind um, a person that I used to work with a very long time ago who, you know, she used to proclaim and her attitude was, oh, I get along with everybody and I love everyone. And I guess at the surface level, that would seem to be true in most cases, except I was able to discern that if she would encounter someone for whom English wasn't their first language, mm -hmm. she was very prejudiced against those those people. And so if you were from, you know, the United States or you were from a country um, that their foundry language was English, then there was no problem with that. But if you were from a country that English wasn't your first language and you spoke clearly with an accent that you had learned English at some point later, she was very prejudiced against those people and she had no idea. It was clear to me that she had no idea that that was a prejudice that she held. And, um, and so that's an unconscious bias that uh, can affect very negatively in terms of yes. a workplace operations, especially if you're a leader and you have a, like a bias like that example and you're treating people on your teams differently. If you're, you know, if you're, uh, if you're hiring practices mm -hmm. involve these kinds of biases and you don't know it. I mean, those are just some examples of yeah. how uh, biases can affect negatively. So in this workshop, we challenge people to uncover their biases. So once you become aware of something, then you can start to learn how to fix it. And what I find that is interesting is that when you think about unconscious bias, it typically and upfront includes things that we would say that fall under diversity, equity, and inclusion from race, ethnicity, language, religion, marital status, socioeconomic status. Um, it could be height. It could be age. It could be 
you know, so many things. And, you know, you could have, have dated someone who maybe hurt you, who was, you know, had blonde hair. Um, and so now, you know, you're skittish to connect with people who have blonde hair. All these things. So it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that falls under diversity, equity, inclusion. However, it's something that maybe has impacted you in a in a deep way that then has an influence on your decision making skills. And so in this workshop, we really try to bring that to the surface in three different ways. One is from a lecture standpoint, the other is from experiential, and then the other is application. And it's really important for us to be able to tap onto one of those three because we know that everyone learns a little differently. Yeah, you know, one thing I just wanted to point out real quick because what you said was really important. You know, I one time worked in a very large work center and there was uh, a, a coworker that had this super, super, super sunny disposition. And, um, you know, and people used to gossip about her behind her back because people didn't think that it was real. And that's an unconscious bias because it has nothing to do with typical DE&I Right. Um, standards, but again, you know, it can be an unconscious bias because it's something that people didn't realize that they were maligning her about because it was unconscious, but it was all had to do with the fact that she was always seemed to be happy. This is a hopefully a series or this workshop has really given you an insight in a little bit more in depth, seeing what we can provide to you, your leaders in your organization. And if you would like to reach out to us, you can reach out to David at davidbaker-hargrove.com or you can reach out to me at robertbakerhargrove.com or you can reach out to both of us at bhcassessment.com. Thank you so much for watching this workshop series video, and we hope to hear from you.